Yeah, but... Ready to go. Come on, Roy. Flags up. Time to get a good shot. Away. Is that the way? This way. There it goes. Here it's straight away. Stop. Yeah, they're gone. There they go. Where are they? Second. Yeah, second. Second. By the looks of it. Yes, second. Me? Yeah. Yes, they are second. Come on, Roy. Come on, Dad. Come on, lad. Come on, Roy. Go on, lad. Streak it. Bloody hell, it's streaking yeah. down. Come on, lad. Come on, lad. Come on, Roy. Come on, lad. Has he? Bloody hell. He's having a go again. Got him again, haven't you, the guy? No, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Go on, oh, lad. Come on, Roy. Come on, Go on, lad. You got him. Come on, lad. Got yes. Got him again. Come on, lad. 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 Come
They're both in the frame. Oh, that other one's giving him some aggro. Come on, Roy! Go on, Roy! It's over, the race is over. Second, first time here. Not bad at all. Not three really bad. That was. Yep. Flags up now. Flags up. He's walking away. He's gone. Gone into first, have they? No, yeah. Look, it's over the lead, right on the outside. Did he? Yeah. No, I don't think it was. No. no. Second, the second. Second, yeah. Second, yeah. Come on then, laddies. Come on, lad. That is a guy on Second. Have they got them? Yes! Well, they are out there to race 14, the ultra lightweight event, the 125, uh, 125cc. Come on, Come on let's Come keep on, it going, lads. Come on, go on lads. Good, lad. That yam's coming. Oh, he's doing it again. Quick on that, mate. Yeah. That's where Roy loose it there. Yeah. Go on, lads. Go on, lads. He's just trying to go around him. He'll have him down the straight, though, I'm afraid. Yeah. Any second now. Go on, Roy. Hold him, lad. Hold him, lad. Hold him, lad. Hold him, hold him. 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 Hold him.
Oh, he's got it. Go, go back. Go on, hold him. Oh, yeah. Come on now. Come on now. Yes, yeah. still there. I don't know. Go on, lad. Still there. Go on, lad. Go on, lad. Yeah, just hold in. Go on. Go on. Go on, lad. On him. Yeah, yeah, Bloody yeah. hell. Go on, lad. I said that's where he's... Come on, then, now. Come on. Go on. He's stretched out to lead now, that yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm anti. Yeah. Come on, lad. Come on, lad. Come on, lad. Go on. Go on. Oh dear. Oh dear. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. No, 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 it's not bad. That blue? the grass. Well, 
this one now. Eight still eight. No, he's not having a go. Got a track on there. Right 
10th. He'll be 10. Yeah, he's done him easy. He's got no chance of making up now. kilograms So Kazmaier, who has already won the log lift, the barrel loading contest, and the uphill race, adds the block lift to his total. He is still the overall leader, and it appears that Jeff Capes is going to need more than a couple of cool drinks to help him in his chase for the crown. More impressive than the astronomical totals lifted by the competitors has been the effort expended by each and every man. But still to come, three more grueling events. First, a silver dollar deadlift, where the competitors will be lifting twice their body weight in silver dollars. And then a caber toss, a 14-foot section of log being tossed on the run for distance. And then finally, the ancient art of sumo wrestling will come into play as the men meet in a series of head-to-head -head eliminations to determine the winner. Stay with us. Uh, do we have a 
have a Cinzano of some sort, Paul, for Paul? Yes, sir. There is Cinzano Rosso, dry, bianco, and rosy. Oh, the complete set. I'll have a Cinzano bianco. Uh, shaken, not stirred. <laughs> Gracias. Mmm, oh, how they still achieve that blend of herbs and wines, I'll never know. Hello. Oh, Melissa, darling, mm, you're early. Would you like a Cinzano? No, thank you. I've just had one. You can drop our name on anyone. Cinzano Bianco. If Tabitha did her own shopping, she would have whiskers at the top of the list. She prefers whiskers every time. A tin full of whiskers. That's her idea of happiness. She gets very excited. The highlight of her life is, is feeding time with whiskers. She can really get her teeth into it. It isn't expensive because she eats everything up. There's no waste at all. All she asks out of life is a plate of whiskers and a lot of love. Whiskers super meat. In tests, 8 out of 10 owners said their cats preferred it. You've still got dandruff, you know. And I said, I know, I've tried everything. And she said, uh, I bet you haven't tried head and shoulders. And I hadn't. So anyway, so I went home. Anyway, I got a parking ticket. Really nice day. So anyway, I tried head and shoulders. And I couldn't believe it. It's fantastic. And my hair's made such a difference. I haven't got dandruff. I haven't got any problems. And my hair's really in fantastic condition. I didn't tell her that, though. Head and shoulders clears dandruff. Ordinary dandruff shampoos leave behind. Use it all the time. Those awfully nice Surrey people have asked me to demonstrate the features of their amazing home video. It leads straight from one program you've recorded to the next at a touch. <laughs> and the next. <laughs> you can whiz through a recording without losing picture, so you can find your favourite bits and savour them. <laughs> and here is a summary. Full remote control, 14-day timer lets you record while you're away. Everything you want in home video from those awfully nice Sony people. Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, our exotic dancer, Sadie, the serpent lady, cannot entertain us tonight as her serpent, Sid the Snake, appears to have legged it from his basket. As you go through life, yes. there will always be little ups and downs. Six pints of Hofmeister, please. Just as there will always be your Hofmeister. Great lager. <laughs> Shame about the snake. <laughs> Welcome back to part three of the World's Strongest Men competition where three events remain. First off, we join the Silver Dollar Deadlift. Six competitors are left and they're trying to move 900 pounds in weight, which is the equivalent of $15,500 or nearly 8,000 pounds sterling. First up, Jerry Hannon from the United States. Come on, Jerry. Rolls his shoulders back, locks it out in a successful lift although it appears to have taken the toll. Now Jeff Capes, remember, he desperately needs a high finish in this event to keep pace with Bill Kazmaier. And his split stance technique does not work. And now Craig Wolfley, who has displayed some exceptional tenacity throughout this competition. Dave Waddington, a power lifter. This is one of the events that he specializes in. <laughs> yeah, 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 900 pounds for Dave Waddington. <laughs> Derwin Piper now, trying to see if he can do better. And you heard him say, no way. Referee Bruce Wilhelm has instructed Bill Kazmaier that he has to lock this thing completely out. That means roll those shoulders back. Well, certainly Kazmaier is satisfied with his lift, and now... The bar is being loaded to 960 pounds, slightly over $16,300, or the equivalent of 8,500 pounds sterling. Two men remain, Dave Waddington and Bill Kazmaier. Yeah, yeah. And despite all of his exhortations, Waddington cannot lift 960 pounds. 
Question is, can Kazmaier? There's his answer, not once, but twice. You know, everybody wants to beat Kazmaier in that event you you really gained the respect of Waddington, everybody that uh, competed here, whatever it took, huh? Yeah, that, uh, this is an easy lift for me. You know, all we were doing was singles today. I thought I'd get a little extra work for tomorrow. <laughs> it is hard to believe, but mighty Bill Kazmaier has already won five events. This time, the Silver Dollar deadlift. Dave Waddington and Jerry Hannon put in excellent efforts, but they were only good enough for second place. And so, after nine events, Bill Kazmaier is still the overall leader and increasing his lead. This monstrosity is a caber. In the next event, the competitors will be tossing this 14-foot, 87-pound piece of lumber for distance. It's a rather traditional contest. For the last 150 years, it has been part of the Highland Games in Scotland, which is rather ironic since there's no Scottish athletes competing here. However, five men remain in the contest. They all survived the early rounds, and the leader so far is Dave Waddington with a throw of 36 feet, 8 and 3 quarter inches. This is Craig Wolfley. Is everybody off? Get off, get off. Caber toss, a technique event. Wolfley uncoils. And he sends the caber on its way to a distance of 35 feet, 4 inches. Next up is Bishop Dolagavich, the Canadian track and field star, expert in the shot put and the discus toss. And he uncorks a whale of a throw, 38 feet, 2 inches. Jeff Capes uh, warming up on deck. He has to be thinking this is a must-win situation. Yes, I, I think I must win this, and also do well in the sumo wrestling. But I've never been so close to Bill. But to gain on uh, reflection, I think uh, people like Mr. Waddington and one or two others might come up uh, because there's double points in the sumo wrestling. And there's only, what, 10 points between three of us. So uh, it is possible to win, but um, I don't like to uh, predict who's going to win. We'll see after this one. Capes balancing the caber on his shoulder, making his approach. Let's it go. Remember, the caber weighs 100 pounds, 14 feet in length. Capes' his throw, 38 feet, 4 and 1 quarter inches. So he becomes the leader. Stage is set for another shot put champion, Joe Zelizniak. Very quick approach. It looks long. Look at this total, 40 feet even for Joe Zelizniak. Now it remains for powerlifter Dave Waddington to see what he can do. Really lets the caber go. Was it good enough? No, 38 feet, 6 inches. Joe, it's not surprising to me that the first three places uh, were held by shot putters. It had to help you in this event. It certainly did. I think the form, is, uh, form in a shot put helps a lot in this. How does the technique drive? How did the technique as you use in the shot put relate to this event? I think coming off your back foot like you would with the shot put helped a lot. You get a good driving power for the shot. And it's, uh, shot putters do a lot of upper body work, leg work. So we, uh, I hate to say we had an advantage, but I think it worked out that way. Actually, the shot putters finished one, three, and four as Dave Waddington edged his way into second place with his final throw. Zelizniak wins 10 points, Waddington 9 for second, Capes 8 for third. And although Kazmaier only won 4 points for his performance in the caber, he remains the overall leader. The cumulative effects of the previous 10 events have really taken a physical toll on these guys, but despite their battered bodies, their spirits remain intact. Now one more task remains. In just a few moments, they'll be taking off their warm-up suits and donning mawashi, or waistbands, as they attempt to try their hand in the ancient form of Japanese wrestling called sumo. This is an elimination event. Five men are left. Jeff Capes has received a bye this round. This is Jerry Hannon going against the Pittsburgh Steeler, the American football player, Craig Wolfley. With all due respect to our Japanese friends, some of the rules of the sumo challenge will be loosely interpreted. The object of this contest to drive your opponent outside of the ring or have any portion of his body touch the mat. And Wolfley uses 
using his exceptional quickness that he relies on playing American football, takes the measure of Jerry Hannon and wins the match. I wish you could see your eyes. It looks like you borrowed a page out of Kazmaier's psych book. Well, you know, I, I don't know. When you see somebody as big as Jerry, you got to get psyched up. You're going to get hurt. So we're just trying to stay in there as best we can. This is Keith Bishop going against Derwin Piper, sort of like David versus Goliath. Even the untrained eye can see that Bishop is at a distinct disadvantage in terms of body weight. But he uses great quickness, does a little sidestep, and throws Derwin Piper out of the ring. Sumo challenge, something new to this world's strongest man competition. The crowd seems to be enjoying it. He's a big man. Yeah, really. I'm scared to follow me. <laughs> you know, you're violating an ancient sumo law. Never dip snuff. <laughs> <laughs> you're not supposed to tell. <laughs> Keith enjoys a little tobacco before every match. He's going against Jeff Cates. This is round three. Craig Wolfley has received a bye, so the winner of this match will meet him. And Bishop does it again. He takes the measure of his second big man in a row. So Keith Bishop will meet Craig Wolfley in the Sumo Challenge Final, a battle of American football players. And believe me, the ground will tremble. Before this match, Craig and Keith admitted to me that they were embarrassed to be seen in such scant attire, but in deference to culture, they decided to put their shyness aside. Testing each other out in the center of the ring. And Bishop throws Craig Wolfley out. Wolfley looking to the judge for a decision, but clearly Keith Bishop is the winner. Tremendous match. Both Craig and Keith became great friends during this competition. Neither man wanted to lose. Throughout this competition, Bill Kazmaier has awed everybody with his amazing strength. But I think you two really won the affection of the crowds with your tenacity. You both put on a whale of a show in every single uh, event. And this sumo challenge seemed to be made for football players, Craig. I don't know. Uh, we're just trying, trying to do our best. I guess I'm obviously disappointed, but hey, if I had to lose, I had to do it to another NFL, right? Does it hurt to lose to a member of the Denver Broncos? It hurts to lose to anybody. <laughs> Keith, you think somewhere along the line some demented offensive line coach will get the bright idea and use this as a training technique? Oh, no, 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 no. I hope not. Uh, you get, your heart gets going too fast. There'll be too many people falling over. The sumo challenge was worth double. Keith Bishop's victory earns him 20 points. Craig Woofley merited 18 points. However, the sumo scoring did not prevent Bill Kazmaier from winning the overall title. Through 11 events, the 27-year-old Kaz was truly awesome. He won the log lift, the cement block lift, the silver dollar deadlift, the uphill race, and the barrel loading contest. A memorable performance. Well, Bill, congratulations for a second year in a row. You are have def successfully defended your World's Strongest Men title. You are to be congratulated. One question I want to ask you, and I think a lot of people who will have watched this program, is this a good indication about who might be the strongest man in the world, perhaps, or is the jury still out because of the iron block countries? Well, it'd be nice to see some East Europeans over here, some Russians, but uh, I don't believe they'll ever come. You know, they probably don't want to make it over here. They could do well in these sports if they trained on them, but I'm sure they won't come over until they're very proficient at all of them. How do you think your strength compares to a uh, Alexeyev or a Sultan Rachmaninoff? Well, in their lifts, they're the kings, and in my lifts, I'm the king. And so the chef here at the country club, appropriately enough, handing out the prestigious British Meat Trophy to the champion, Bill Kazmaier. And I would also like to cite the remarkable performance of Jeff Capes. He won three events, the weight toss, the truck pull, and the bar bend. He is certainly to be commended for his fine second place showing. That's the story here in Great Gorge. I'm Mike Adamley saying thanks for joining us. John Taylor and Bengi Johansson with a most unusual outfit. They've had one day's practice on it. It's the first time it's been raced in public. It's the brand new 500cc machine, long wheelbase with rear engine fitted. And this is the machine that Jock will be racing next Saturday in the Dutch TT. 
when he gets back on the world championship scene completely new spoke to him this morning he said well we're quite happy with it but it's 500 cc compared to the 700 cc's of most of the other machines but it'll be very interesting to see uh, if this 500 new Grand Prix machine can perform here for Jock and for Benga. They're quite happy, last minute adjustments, everyone cleared away. And outfit number six, Dennis and Julia Bingham. Julia, one of the few lady competitors in sidecars now, and in fact the only lady ever to have lapped the TT course in the Isle of Man at over 100 miles an hour when they finished second in the sidecar TT only last week. So an interesting field indeed, but all eyes on Jock Taylor. Look at the length of that machine as he pushes it away. Completely different, 500 cc. We've got 10 laps to go, and they're jockeying for position as they come down towards Redgate for the first time. And it's number two, Steve Abbott and Sean Smith take an early lead. Jock and Benga in the middle of the field as they sweep around Redgate for the first time. The green flag indicating to the riders that the course is clear around Hollywood and Craner Curves, down through the swervery of Donington. You see Sean Smith really leaning out of that outfit, clamoring over the back of it now as they go round the old hairpin for the first time, and number 13 is in second place. That's Mick Barton and Mick Cutmore with a 750 Yamaha under Starkey's Bridge. And Jock Taylor well down the field for him. Remember, the first time this machine has been raced, and uh, we'll see what he can do. But this is the dice at the moment. Number 11 in third place, Derek Bailey and Bob Bryson and Jock Taylor lying in about sixth or seventh position at the moment as they sweep round Copper's Corner for the first time. Mick Barton and Nick Cutmore, number 13 in second place. ACU Sidecar Championship last year, they finished in sixth place. But there's a dice here now for second spot. And breaking here for the chicane. Safely through. And across the line to complete lap number one. And the leader, number two, 13 and 11 in that order, two Steve Abbott, 13 McBarton, and number 11 is Derek Bailey and Bob Bryson. That's the third place man, Derek Bailey, number 11, ACU sidecar champion last year and runner up in the other motorcycle weekly sidecar championship. He was in second place. Number 18, Barry Brindley and Chris Jones are in fourth place. Under Starkey's Bridge, lap two of this 10-lap race. Phil Reed, what do you think of uh, Jock's chances in this? A completely experimental machine, it's uh, something difficult, isn't it? Well, Peter, you can see uh, this is his first uh, try with it, and he's uh, a bit too well down the field now, only in about eighth and ninth place, but uh, this... Uh, Obviously, it's a revolutionary machine with a rider, as you said, sitting in front of the uh, engine, which makes it extremely long. You almost need a, a long load sticker on the back, but uh, ideal, more ideal for the longer Grand Prix circuit. So, lap two, and that's number two, still leading, Steve Abbott and Sean Smith. Through the chicane, lap two on the Ham Yam racing outfit. Number 13, still in second place, Mick Barton and Nick Cutmore with a 750 Yamaha. And Jock Taylor, 7th or 8th position. The unusual machine, as you can see, just see the length of it as Benga with that traditional right leg out. Around safely, Redgate, Benga still holds on there. Around the Redgate, down to Hollywood and Crater Curves. And you can see that Benga's got quite a problem holding that down. Around the old hairpin, 500cc Yamaha engine compared to the 700cc engines of the other machines. Jock is in ninth position at the moment. A very unusual looking machine, but I know he's been uh, wanting to experiment with one of these types of machines for the Grand Prix racing. He's up to Coppice, number five closing on him, number five Gordon Nottingham. Pressure on Jock Taylor there. Around Coppice and back with the leaders now, and it's number two, Steve Abbott and Sean Smith for the 700 Yamaha. Still in second place, 13, Mick Barton and Nick Cutmore, 750 Yamaha. The leaders swerve around the park chicane. Sean Smith hanging out of that outfit, then tucks right down behind the fairing and spreading out, and Jock Taylor's got a lot of traffic between him and the leader if he's going to make any impression in this particular race. 
Second place man, still 13, Mick Clark and Nick Cutmore. Around the red gate, the continuation, almost a never-ending right-hander before down through Hollywood and Craner Curves. That's the first, second and third, with quite a gaggle in as they stream around. But this is the second place man, still number 13. Not superstitious, Mick Barton rides number 13 like Chris Guy does, who's a man of interest in the solo races. And incidentally, a very pleased to say that all the riders in the previous race, which we saw where they were falling off, none of them have any injuries at all. In fact, Gary Padgett, who is uh, taken away by ambulance, has a cut knee and a cut finger, and he said, I'm off to limber up with a glass of orange juice in the bar, ready for the superbike race. So they're all perfectly safe from that pro-am race. But that's still the second place, number 13, number two still leading, Steve Abbott and Sean Smith, third in the Sidecar Championship last year and fifth in the ACU Sidecar Championship. Steve Abbott and Sean Smith, the Han Yang Racing Team, completing now lap number four. Ten lap race, 13 is still in second place. And number four, the third outfit is Bruce Ford Dunn and Dave Mawson. That's the difference between second and third. Number four, Bruce Ford Dunn and Dave Mawson, fourth in the big sidecar championship last season. And around Redgate, Hollywood, Greater Curves, going through there, the sidecar, somewhere around about 110 miles an hour in fifth gear before breaking for the old hairpin, which they'll be going around there in somewhere around about 60 miles an hour, virtually drifting the machine around. Under Starkey's bridge, the wheel just slips there. And that's the idea, the passenger hanging out to keep three wheels firmly on the tarmac. Around McLean's, number two, Steve Abbott and Sean Smith just increasing their lead. This is the battle now for second place. Mick Barton and Nick Cutmore in outfit number 13. Number four, that is Bruce Fordham and Dave Morton. That's the first three and the retirement there. A machine pulled off the circuit and uh, 1.7 seconds the lead for number two over number 13 and 1.2 seconds between second and third. Through the chicane, this is half distance, five laps completed. And Phil, at the moment, it looks as Steve Abbott and Sean Smith with that uh, immaculately prepared Ham Yam team just seems to have it uh, sorted out. Well, they've obviously got the right tires on for today. I mean, it's very cold uh, and a bit dampish. Uh, so they want really, uh, really soft tires. They seem to be really getting their heads down and doing the corners really neatly without wasting any time. They're getting really deep into the corners before they break. Down to the old hairpin then with uh, the acrobatic Sean Smith clambering all over that outfit. Steve Abbott looks over the shoulder. He's got a comfortable lead under Starkey's bridge. And there's the second place man and third. And Jock Taylor still struggling down the field in ninth position. That's the leader on lap six. Second, number 13, Cutmore and third, Bruce Ford done. The leader at Coppice. Drifting around there, around about 60 miles an hour and then accelerating up into top gear where they'll reach in perfect condition about 140 miles an hour, just over that little rise in the ground. You see the passenger, Sean Smith, up over the rear wheel as they drift around the first part of Park Chicane, clambering this side, almost hanging off the machine to keep that third wheel firmly in contact with the ground. So, six laps completed, and the uh, First, second, and third, taking about half the length of the finishing straight. That's third, Bruce Ford Dunn and Dave Mawson, 700 Yamaha. Started in club racing at Bruce Ford Dunn and suddenly made an impact about 18 months ago in the international scene. And he's uh, one of the up-and-coming promising riders in sidecar racing in the uh, British Isles. And the uh, Grand Prix shouldn't be too far away for Bruce Ford Dunn's success in those, I mean, of course. The teamwork you can see is absolutely vital between the rider and the passenger as the wheel just lifts a swerve there from the second place to the third place outfit, number four, Bruce Ford Dunn and Dave Mawson. The leader at Coppers. And uh, number five is certainly moving up through the field very well. Gordon Nottingham, who was chasing Jock Taylor, he's come up into fifth position, but that's the leader. Number two, Abbott and Smith, 700 Yamaha, had a third place in the second leg of the GT of the Alabama last week and uh, got the 100 mile an hour lap for the three wheelers. 
Lap seven almost completed. The leaders across the line starting lap number eight, three to go, and already starting to catch up with one of the back markers. That's the second place outfit, number 13 still, and in third place, number four, Bruce Ford Dunn. And here's the battle now for fourth, fifth, and sixth places. It's the Binghams, followed by number five, Gordon Nottingham. And three battling it out there for fourth place. Dennis and Julia Bingham, outfit number six, just ahead of number five, and that is Gordon Nottingham and Steve Johnson. The husband and wife team, the uh, outfit prepared by Padgett and Batley, under Starkey's Bridge, lap number eight. And the Binghams are making a small impression on the third place outfit. Around McLean's, drifting around there, 60 miles an hour. And a rare old battle indeed there for fourth, fifth and sixth places. Number 18, Barry Brindley and Chris Jones joining in the merriment. Those three battling out for fourth, fifth and sixth places. Dennis and Julie Bingham, the husband and wife team, a very lightweight passenger, but Julia certainly enjoys the sidecar racing, and they're having a lot of success over the past 18 months or so. And Gordon Nottingham make a move on the outside, but uh, Dennis and Julie Bingham have the uh, correct line. There's the battle still. Number 18 just uh, losing ground a little there. Jock Taylor still holding on to his ninth position, but Dennis and Julie Bingham are through, safely past one of the back markers, and the continuation of Redgate then into Hollywood and Craner Curve, swerving down through there, somewhere around about 110 miles an hour. That is the leader, number two, and he is on lap number nine, just one to go after this. Steve Abbott and Sean Smith. Meaning you notice on the outfit of uh, the leader, Steve Abbott, uh, the fairing is well close to the ground, and it has some uh, ground effect which helps to suck the outfit down. Obviously, he is taking advantage of this. Is this the aerodynamics uh, being introduced? In line with the Formula One cars, we had that uh, enables the, the air to, um, to actually suck the, the arc to the ground. Obviously, it has some effect because uh, he can go fast around the corner. And already catching up with another of the back markers, number 29, Chaz Greenix and Jim Swanson, and overtaking him at the chicane. The leader now leads by 3.76 seconds. Lap nine, he's completing. Lap ten, he is starting his final lap. And a comfortable lead for these two, Steve Abbott and Sean Smith. Drifting around Redgate Corner in second gear, around about 70 miles an hour. Sean Smith with his acrobatic way over that rear wheel. And watch him move quickly now to the other side and almost hang off the machine as he keeps that wheel firmly on the ground. Lap ten. The old hairpin. A comfortable lead, as you can see, there's the first place outfit and there's the second just coming into view. But this is the leader, a comfortable lead from lap one to this lap ten. Up the short straight to Coppers Corner for the tenth and final time. Swerves it around and now accelerates up through the gearbox, up the top gear, sixth gear, around about 140 miles an hour. Sean Smith, flat on the fairing, the sidecar, which is really just a board with some fairing around it, holding the other wheel on. And now into Park Chicane, tenth and final time. Keep that wheel down, Sean. The chequered flag there. And Steve Abbott and Sean Smith win this 10-lap sidecar. In second place, number 13, that is Mick Barton and Nick Cutmore. And number four just beats Dennis Bingham. Bruce Ford Dunn just holds on to the third place. And there's the winner, Steve Abbott, Sean Smith, the winner. Second, number 13, Mick Barton and Nick Cutmore. And just in third place, Bruce Ford Dunn and Dave Mawson, but only just by half a machine's length from Dennis and Julie Bingham. Jock Taylor. Now off the British Grand Prix starts and straight into the lead goes one of the Galena Suzuki's. It could well be Franco Uncini, but, and it is, they're going into the lead. Surprise, totally unexpected, is Stuart Avant, the New Zealander on a privately owned machine, 
and he's done brilliantly in practice and in second place behind him it's Marc Fontaine, the Frenchman, in third position and this is significant, it's Katayama and down and there's a fire there, I can't identify the machine until I see the number, it's Graham Wood who's off again, Graham Wood has fallen off a lot, I can't identify the other fallen rider at the moment but it is still Avant leading, Fontaine is in second position on lap one and Takazumi Katayama, the Japanese rider on the three-cylinder Honda, which has won one Grand Prix, the bike on fire, will they stop it before they come round? Yes, they will. Superb marshalling, very good firefighting equipment here. It's, it's Roberts! Kenny Roberts is out of the race! It's not his machine of fire, obviously, but Kenny Roberts on the first corner, the man who was so well placed in the World Championship, and that's his petrol tank behind it. There is Kenny Roberts lying there, his helmet's off. That's the man I couldn't identify. Kenny Roberts obviously conscious, but from the way he is not moving, I suspect that his leg has been hurt, his left leg. Now, are they going to keep the race going? The course is damp. Uh, particularly on this section and out goes the course car there'll be the doctor in that I'm watching for the flags and meantime coming through at the end of lap one it's Takazumi Katayama on the Honda and then Uncini and behind him Fontaine and then Stuart Event and they're coming up to Cops Corner with Uncini the world championship leader going through and taking the lead from Katayama in this already tremendously sensational race and they pass Kenny Roberts on the left and it looks to me as though he was sitting up and the machine that was afar is out now let's have a look at Kenny Roberts as the rest of the riders go through and uh, Takazumi Katayama the X 350cc world champion with Kenny Roberts obviously not able to move is in second place Katayama and Uncini who has already this year won four Grand Prix to put in 20 points ahead of Barry Sheen who is in hospital Kenny Roberts